What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today I have another viewer requested video or a topic that a viewer suggested that I do a video on. And it's actually a pretty good uh, topic for us to all get to know and understand and that is how to determine who is going to be a future free agent and who's going to be hitting the free agency market in Madden. Uh, and this is one of the things that Madden doesn't really give you direct notice ahead of time of who's potentially hitting free agency and and things like that that's kind of one of the areas where the game is weak and franchise mode is weak because in real nfl football you have a good idea ahead of time during the season who's having a contract negotiation who's not having a contract negotiation you know what are some teams plans with players to let them go and things like that you usually have you know, some time frame ahead of those players actually being free agents and being able to sign them in order to gauge whether those players will be out there or not. And then likewise gauge what you want to do with your players uh, kind of in the same breath, because if a good player goes out there to free agency, then you might be sorry that you re-signed a player that's not as good. Uh, and it could be vice versa. So with that being said, Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the first thing that you guys are going to want to do, and this is going to be primarily done through the salaries table. Pretty much everything here is going to be done through the salaries table. Um, when you really want to start monitoring this, if you really want to get a jump on who's going to potentially be a free agent in the future, is you want to start by sorting uh, teams and positions. Let's say there's a specific position you want or you can just sort by a team and sort through this way. You're gonna sort and find players that have one or zero years left on their contracts. Now there are a couple of important things here. So during the regular season, you're gonna be looking for players with one year left on their contract. Anybody is gonna have at least one year left on their contract during the regular season. And that one year left on their contract means that at the end of the season, their contract will be expiring. And if you monitor that throughout the season, let's say you know we're in week one, and for example, I want to bring in Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny, I want to monitor his situation closely. Well, in week one, he has one year remaining on his contract, but come week 17, he has five years remaining on his contract. What ends up happening there is that means that that player was re-signed because it added years to their contract. And so that's the first step, is monitoring which players are expiring and monitoring uh, essentially whether they get re-signed or not during the season. And so that's step number one. Step number two is when you get to the off season, or rather the playoffs, I should say, um, you're gonna get a good idea of who is actually expiring because once you get to the playoffs and a team is eliminated from the playoffs, you're going to see that the players transition to having zero years left on their contract that haven't been re-signed during the season. So this is your best indication. Uh, if you, know, you really don't wanna put a ton of effort into it, but you want to get a good idea of who's going to be up for negotiation you know, in a final contract situation after the Super Bowl, you can look at team situations and see who has zero. So I know Chris Carson is going to be up for a final contract or tag after the Super Bowl week. Uh, you know, Shaquille Griffin or Shaquem Griffin, um, you guys are going to see various other players that have this. Super important that you guys check this during playoff time because this is whenever players really start to see uh, you know, zero years remaining, and you'll see who teams chose not to re-sign during the regular season. And this right here can be an indication of whether that player rejected a contract um, or they just chose not to negotiate with that player. And so players on this list with zero years remaining during playoffs and things like that are going to be really good players to keep an eye out for because more than likely they're going to be hitting the free agent market. Now, like I said, there's going to be that one week after the Super Bowl where teams can still sign the these players and tag these players so you have to keep that in mind but the other thing while you are doing this during regular season and postseason the best way to do this is to cross-reference which players are up for contract negotiations here with how much cap space a team has left over so the Seattle Seahawks, for example, have $43.7 million in cap space. So you can be pretty sure that if they wanted to, they could re-sign these guys back to the team. 
However, there are some teams that are going to have really low cap numbers. Uh, right now, see if we can find somebody just by scrolling through. There are going to be teams that have pretty slim cap numbers whenever you get to this point in the season. So Chiefs, for example, anybody that would have zero years left on their contract for the Chiefs, you can pretty much expect that that team is not going to be able to resign them because they only have $2 million in cap space. Uh, likewise for the Eagles, for example, you can 100% expect the Jalen Mills, LeBlanc, Peters, Gary, all of these guys with zero years left on their deal are going to be free agents. You know that 100% for a fact because they don't have the money to re-sign these guys come uh, the off-season re-sign phase. And so that is the best way to do it is to tell during the season whether they have one year on their contract, during the postseason if they have zero years on their contract, and then cross-reference that with the team's cap situation. And you'll be able to see fairly quickly whether a player has money or whether a team has money to re-sign those players or not. Now that is obviously can still be a bit of a get guessing game. You know, we know the Eagles are in a bad cap situation and going to the future, they're still going to be in a bad cap situation. But that's our current year cap space. So next year's cap space space is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, so you have to factor that into account. Now, what I want to say is that there is one surefire way, and it's not, I don't want to say it's surefire. I don't want to say it's guaranteed, but this is the best way to tell if a player is going to be a free agent or not. If you hit the off season re-sign stage here, and then you go to the raw, the salary management and you check for teams uh, with players that are left to re-sign, CPU teams especially, you're going to start to see players again with zero years left on their contract and that is a pretty good indication that these players will be hitting the free agent market. Now, this is not a 100% foolproof way of doing it. There is no guaranteed way to determine whether one player is going to hit the free agent market or not. But if you've arrived and you want to put in the least effort possible but still get a good idea, if you've arrived at the offseason re-sign phase, this is the most basic way to do it get to the off-season re-sign phase. This is where they have their last chance to negotiate with a player. This is where they have their last chance to tag a player or their only chance to tag a player. Go to your salaries table and sort team by team and find the players with zero years left on their contract. Those are the players that will most likely be hitting free agency. And you will get a pretty good idea of who's going to be out there and who's going to be available for you guys to sign. Um, and, you know, likewise, you can still cross-reference that with their cap space up there. So for for example, we've now hit the next season. We know that the Saints have only $2.9 million in cap space. It's going to be pretty much impossible for them to bring back Mike Williams. So if I'm looking for a free safety, I'm pretty much guaranteed that Mike, or sorry, Marcus Williams is going to be out there in free agency for me to be able to sign. That's a perfect example for you guys. Zero years left on his contract. Team has almost no cap space to bring him back. That is going to be a player that's going to be out there in free agency. And that's the best way for you guys to be able to tell who's going to be out there, who's going to be a future free agent, who's going to be potentially available. Now, the other thing I'll say is you can get a very good idea from user teams. This is this is mainly talking about CPU teams and CPU franchises. You can get a very good idea from user teams if a player has not been re-signed by the end of the season. Uh, because if a player hasn't been re-signed by the end of the season, generally speaking, you can assume that they're trying to get a cheap negotiation with them in the offseason, and chances are good that that's not going to work out for them. Now, I'm not going to say that that's 100% of the time, but you, like I said, you can get a pretty good idea of who's going to be out there by keeping track of these things. And I know that it can be a lot of effort to monitor it all the way through the season. So that's why I point out that if you want to spend the least amount of effort and get the most bang for your buck, come here at off-season re-signing stage and give it a look. Now, the last thing that I want to say in terms of this is this can create some issues in terms of whether you want to re-sign players or not re-sign players. I am certainly not saying to hold off on re-signing all of your players until the end of the season because you're only going to get one chance to sign these guys in the off-season re-sign phase. And if they don't decide to sign that contract with you, you might be sorry that you didn't negotiate with them early. You know, if I wait till this point to sign Chris Carson or Shaquille Griffin, I might be kind of sad 
whenever they leave my team and I might be kind of without a player to fill that void because I chose not to negotiate with them during the season. So you kind of have to choose what, how you want to balance it for your team. If it's a player that you don't really care about um, or you're looking for an upgrade at that position, then more than likely you're better off waiting till this offseason re-signing phase to try to offer your guy a contract after you've looked at who is potentially hitting the free agent market. Uh, guys that you definitely want to keep around, negotiate a contract with them during the season and get them back on your team. Uh, guys that are kind of in the middle, so-so, you're not sure whether you want to bring them back or not, you know, towards the end of the season is whenever you're going to get maybe a better picture of whether you should bring them back or not. Um, so that's all I really have to say in terms of it. There are some pretty good ways here for you guys to monitor this information and keep track of whether players are going to be you know, future free agents in the off season and things like that or not. So hopefully this information is helpful to you guys. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about doing this. I know that this is something that's just kind of been... Um, regular for me. Uh, it's kind of routine for me, I guess is the way to put it, that I go through and I just monitor salaries and see who's on expiring deals and stuff like that. And sometimes those are guys that I trade for you because you can get them for cheaper or I let them hit the free agent market. And I know that they're out there so I don't re-sign players at those positions that I want to bring in that free agent player. So with that being said, Hopefully this video was useful to you. If this information was useful and you guys want to continue to see more of this type of video answering your questions and things like that, leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know what you guys want to see next. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit that bell notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a good one.